Meet Maggie Clark, a librarian for humanitarian studies at CSU Dominguez Hills, armed with a master's degree in library information science from UCLA and a blend of English and anthropology from UCSB. We asked her what she knew about Francis Scott Key, the man behind the national anthem. Francis Scott Key was a lawyer by trade, not like a musician or a professional songwriter. So he set his words to an existing British drinking song, actually, called To Anacreon in Heaven by John Stafford Smith, which is kind of ironic that our American national anthem would be set to a British song. The reason he was there at Fort McHenry that day was because he was working with another U.S. official to negotiate the release of some American prisoners of war who were being kept on that British warship. So he, they had gone out to the warship and actually been successful in their negotiations and were getting ready to free these American prisoners of war when the Battle of Fort McHenry actually began to take place. And so they were trapped on this British warship, witnessing the battle from there. Next, we asked her how much of the visual symbolism from the Star Spangled Banner was actually true. A lot of it really was based on Francis Scott Key's personal experiences. He's surrounded by just like bombs, fire, rockets are going off, everything is smoky. Um, there's of course fog because this is happening over the water as well. And so all night he's just sitting on this British warship and as John's approaching, you have to imagine, you know, he's probably expecting the worst. He knows they've been bombarded all night. He's probably expecting to see just like a decimated fort, total carnage. Um, and instead, as the fog sort of breaks and the smoke begins to clear, he sees this big American flag and he knows that the fort has stood and that the British have lost the battle and the Americans are safe. Finally, we asked her what happened to truly make the Star Spangled Banner the United States National Anthem. From there, he just decided to publish his work. So it kind of swept the country. It was used a lot in military ceremonies and for military events. And it became so popular that eventually a real professional musician kind of stepped in and you know polished the poem up a little bit to make it work better with the tune and gave it the name the Star Spangled Banner. So that's kind of how it came to be the song that we know today. It actually didn't become the national anthem until 1931 because that required a, an act of Congress. And so that's when they passed a resolution to make the Star Spangled Banner our official national anthem.